Hey there, Waymaker class. I'm so glad you're able to join us for this next study in the book of 1 John. And uh, so let's uh, look into our text today and see what we are able to discover. So uh, the opening line, and we're in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 um, in, this, in, this, uh, in this lesson, or it may be 18. I think it's 18. No, it's 1 John 4, 16. So he says here, God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. And so John is saying to us that those who have been born again and that they, they are living by the Spirit, so to speak, uh, when he's referring to this idea of in love, remaining or abiding. I prefer the word abiding. We can use the word abiding. Um, but it's the idea also of remaining. In other words, you don't get outside of the love of God. Uh, you don't allow the world's affairs to pull you out of God. Um, uh, notice that the word there is in love. And uh, I want to talk about this. For a second, um, the one who remains in love remains in God, uh, and we he, we have to clarify that by saying that he is referring to a location. It is being in God. It is in love and in God that we remain, uh, and he is stressing it. Notice that he is he has used this word three times remaining in love, remaining in God, and God remains in him. And so it is a location. Uh, and so we have to see it as an example, as a dot, a point of reference within a circle. Uh, God and love being the circle and you being the point. Uh, and this is the whole point of that God is trying to make in this passage is, is that this idea of abiding and remaining in the love and in God, and as we do so, he remains in us. And so this is uh, vitally important. We don't allow anything to, to uh, remove us from the place of God's love. And so uh, I think if we take for a moment, we can think about Romans chapter 8, where Paul says, what shall what shall divide us from the love of Christ? And he begins to give this list of things, uh, both spiritual and uh, temporal, of things that cannot remove us from the love of God. There's only one thing that can remove you and I from the love of God, friends, and it is our, it is our own decision. It is our, our uh, if we allow anger and such things to begin to fester in us and to, to steal the love of God out of our heart, then we no longer abide in him. And so it's vitally important that we remain in his love. And doing so, we are going to be uh, accepting and forgiving to those around us. Um, and we're going to show God's grace and God's mercy. Okay. Verse 17, he says, in this, uh, love is made manifest, or is, yeah, is made complete. Uh, God's love is made complete um, with us, or in us, could be another way, but it's with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Um, I want you to notice something in this passage as well. He says that we may have uh, confidence in the day of judgment. Uh, there's only one. There's a, only one great judgment coming, and it's coming very soon, and that is at the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. In that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because as he, because as he is, so also are we in this world. Um, the Greek's a little different. That's why sometimes you might see me pause. It's because I get confused by what the translators have placed in there instead of the Greek. Um, but this is the confidence that we have. 
uh, is that is that he is, so are we in the world. And so we understand that the world hated Jesus, and so the world's going to hate you. And uh, But yet Jesus went about doing good, healing all that's oppressed of the devil. And this is our function in the world as well. We are to be uh, messengers of God's good news. Uh, we're to to seek the benefit and the good for everyone who is around us. Now, that doesn't mean that we accept their ideology or some of their twisted ideas. It just means that we love them in, in spite of those things. Um, God still expects um, justice and righteousness. He expects us to follow his word and uh uh, we live in an age today where they want God to bend to what their will and desires are. Uh, when the truth of the matter is, uh, we are to be subject to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And his word should be supreme in our hearts. We should be following his word and doing that which pleases him, not ourselves. And yet today we live in a world where, uh, especially here in America, it's all about us and uh, what we want and what we're going to do. And it's about pleasing ourselves. And uh, uh, we, we, we are just hell bent on being uh, pl pleasured in whatever way that we desire to be pleasured. And it doesn't matter what our neighbor thinks. It doesn't matter what God thinks. It's just all about us. And here's the tragedy of all that, friends. That there, God is just and God is righteous and God will judge one day. That's why he says we can have confidence on the day of judgment if we're following Christ. If we're Christ followers and we're following Christ and we're loving our neighbor as ourselves, if we're keeping uh, the desires of God and keeping his word and following his word, we're going to be safe. We're going to have confidence. We're going to know that, that, we, that we know that we know that God is our father and that all is well. But if we're not following his word and we're not loving our neighbors ourselves, friends, I can assure you that you will be judged and you will be judged according to the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and you don't compare. You don't even begin to measure up to that uh, because he was very plain. He said he's come to fulfill the law. And it's just it's basically like this. You can't do it, but I can and I'll do it in your behalf. Uh, if you'll accept it, uh, but people don't want to accept it. They prefer to live life on their terms, and I can assure you that just as you have lived life in your terms, you will live judgment in God's terms, and God will be righteous and judged in it, and the thing is, you will know that he was right in his decision. Uh, that I know right now I'm probably shaking your head and thinking, I don't know about that. Well, you will. You will know that you were wrong and he was right and that you have been judged. Let's look at verse 18. In verse 18, he says, and there is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. Um, let's just think about that for a minute. There is no fear in love. When you are loved, when you are being loved and you are loving back, in other words, when you're in the love of God, you have nothing to be afraid of. Uh, this world is a terror to those who do not have the love of God. Uh, this is why, uh, as we watch sometimes in the Middle East and around the world, people being put to death for Christ's sake, they're, because they're a Christian, you notice there's no fear on their face. There's no fear in love because they know that the next moment they'll be in the loving presence of their Holy Father. There is no fear in love. Instead, he says, instead, perfect or complete love divides out fear, or it casts out fear. In other words, the word there is bale, it cast. And so it, he cast out fear because why does he do it? God's the one who's casting out the fear. His, his love comes to abide in your heart 
and because his love abides in your heart, he cast out fear. Uh, the kingdom of God is not one of fear, but of faith and love. Um, we often think that that the opposite of fear is is faith, but it's not. It's love. Love uh, pushes out or it casts out fear. Why? Because fear involves or it has torment or punishment. It's it's the fear is about this idea of being punished for our wrongdoings. It's a torment. Um, and so uh, the Greek literally here says, looking at uh, verses uh, in this verse, talks about love cast out fear. And it says, because, hati, um, because the one who is afraid uh, is is going, having to be punished is why they're they're a fearful they're they're fearful because they know they will be punished for their for their indiscretions let's say and so God takes away that fear when we are no longer in opposition to Him and when we come in unity and we come in harmony with Him uh, we become into the the realm of the beloved. We become part of the beloved, and so there's no more fear. Uh, he says, because fear, uh, so that the one who fears is not complete in love. He tells us right there that this is why they're afraid. They're, and so, friends, if you're afraid, check your love. That's what we need to do. Uh, if we're afraid, we need to check in our love and see what is bringing about this fear? Why are we afraid? What are we afraid of? And we need to try to figure out how to replace that fear with the love of God. Okay. Then he goes on and he says in verse 19, we love because he first loved us. Okay. We love because he first loved us. Um, God so loved the world, John says in John 3.16. Everybody's familiar with this. That he gave his only begotten son, uh, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so if the love of God is in us, uh, it's because God loved us first. And as we abide in that love, we love our neighbors as ourselves, okay? So he loved us, and out of that, love was created in our hearts for others. Um, sometimes it's hard to love some of our neighbors. Some of our neighbors sometimes, I think, really get on our nerves. They, they, uh, they annoy us and, and such, but... Friends, I want to say this, that God loves your neighbor just as much as he loves you. He loves your enemies as much as he loves you. And it's hard for us to imagine that God would love such people. But the truth of the matter is, it's hard to imagine sometimes, at least in my mind, how that God could even love me. And when we begin to think about that, and we begin to reflect on our lives, some of the horrible things that we've done, and listen, uh, it's easy for us to say, well, I've committed no sin. Well, friends, you don't know Christ. You don't know Christ if you, if you sit there and you think, I've committed no great atrocities. The Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have stolen. All of us have cheated. All of us have uh, imagined murder in our hearts. All of us have imagined and we have broken the Ten Words of God, the Ten Commandments, in some respect. And so we need to realize that if we've broken the law of God, and the crazy thing is, is that from a Jewish perspective, there's 613 laws that had to be kept. It wasn't just the Ten Commandments, but there was um, 613. And I assure you, we've broken more. we've broken more than we've kept. And then James says, if one is just to break one law, he's broken them all. And so 
Uh, we've all done hateful things, and yet God loved us, and that God's love, when it was birthed into our hearts, caused us to love those around us. And so he goes on, he says, if anyone says, I love God, and here's the whole point, if anyone says, I love God, and yet hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. Now, we have to ask ourselves, who is our brother and who is our sisters? And the truth of the matter is, uh, we live in a world today where they want to divide us up into different races, different clans, different tribes, different this, different that. They want to focus on the differences between us. When the truth of the matter is, we are one human race. Every man, it says over in Acts chapter 17, as Paul is preaching at the Argibus, he says very clearly, he says very clearly, God created all men out of one blood. And so we are one human race. We're not, we're not white and black or, or yellow and red or anything like that. We are one human race. And we need to stop this silly foolishness of prejudice against one another. And we need to understand that God has commanded us everywhere to obey his word and to love one another. And so he says, if anyone says that they love God and yet hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. Friends, if you have hate in your heart for folks of a different complexion, uh, a different race, a different ethnicity, then the love of God is not in you. And you need to reflect on that. And you need to uh, adjust your heart and mind to the fact that God is love and that God loves every person in the world. He loves white people and black people and yellow people and red people. And he loves everyone. And he desires that all, that's the interesting word there, all means all. He desires that all people should come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so we are to love one another, even as Christ has loved us and gave himself for us as a sacrifice. Let's go on. He says, for the person who does not love his brother or sister, whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. Think about that. You, you're hating people that you can see. You hate black people. You hate white people. You hate yellow people. You, you, you just, you're full of hate. And where there's hate, there's not the love of God. And God expects us to love one another. We must love one another. We must come in unity. Uh, I'm fascinated by the fact that people cannot seem to get along anymore. It doesn't make sense. People are rude. They're selfish. They're everything that the Apostle Paul said that this generation would be like in the last days, lovers of selves rather than lovers of God. It's, it's, we're, we're the, we, it's all about I. It's all about me. Uh, and so this is why we buy iPhones. It's about my, my, my pleasure and my desires and my this. And uh, notice a lot of the websites is my this or my that. Uh, friends, we need, to, we need to refocus our attention on our neighbor and love them, even as we love ourselves, even as Christ loved us. So he says, for the person who does not love his brother or sister, whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And so how can you say that you love God when you've never seen God? And uh, we, uh, we, we, need to, we need to get our priorities straight. We need to love one another, okay? It's, uh, look at this last verse. He goes on, he says in verse 28, he says, God must also love um, the one who loves God. Let's get it right. Well, we've, we've missed part of the verse here. Let's try this again. Uh, talking about the commandment of God, okay? Um, and we have this commandment from him. Uh, notice it's a commandment. It's not a request. It's not a desire, but it's a command from the Lord. 
and we have this command from him. The one who loves God must also love his brother and sister. And so we're, we are compelled by God's command. You see, God has taken those 10 commandments as we call them here in the West. They're actually the 10 words, uh, but out of the Old Testament and given over in Exodus 20. But he says to us, that we are to love one another. That's what the Ten Commandments is really all about, doing loving acts towards one another. I mean, and so, and that begins by doing loving acts towards God. And that's the first commandments. We love God, and then we love our neighbor. And uh, he has commanded us that we are to love one another. Uh, uh, and we're going to see in another place where he says, and his 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 commandments are not grievous. In other words, they're not hard. They're not. They're not. Uh, we might make them hard ourselves. But the truth of the matter is, we have been commanded to love one another. And so, friends, I I encourage you, I beg you, begin to love people, love people, whether they're whether they're of a different race, whether they're of a different persuasion in their sexuality. We are to love them. That doesn't mean that God's law is not still in place. It does mean, though, that we are to love one another and to encourage people in a right direction uh, and not to hate. Uh, we're not to hate. We're to love. That doesn't mean that we accept their lifestyle. That's not what we're doing. We're not saying their lifestyle is okay. What we're saying is, is that God loves you, and because God loves you, I love you, and I want to encourage you to come under the umbrella of God's grace and mercy and his love and begin to walk out his commandments as he has laid them out within Holy Scripture. And that's the bottom line. And so with that said, we've, we've used our time up for the day, and I want to encourage you to walk in the love of God, to abide in the love of God, and to keep God's commandments as he has commanded us to love one another. And so until next time, God bless you. And I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you, that he'll cause his face to shine upon you, and that he'll grant you peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Until next time, God bless you. And I encourage you, just walk in his grace.